remember the famous uh, Obama roast of Trump that some people after the fact thought that made Trump run for president? <laughs> so I always think like, how often does Obama think of that moment or the speech writers like- Completely, revenge was on his mind. Hey, welcome to Punchlines. And today we are talking to Politico's very own playbook star, Ryan Lizza, about the big party the White House Correspondents' Dinner in Washington. Over the last few years, come in for a lot of criticism and a lot of people sort of go, what is this about? And why are you fraternizing like this? I think that part of the cringe factor comes also from the fact that these are two groups that are not particularly loved. So the (laughs) politicos and the Washington Politico establishment and the journalistic establishment come together for a great bonfire of the vanities. And um, people sort of go, ugh, you know, what's this about? Yeah, I mean, we're lucky, like, people with pitchforks don't march on it and try and, like, you know, storm the Hilton, considering the the approval rating of these two groups. You're right. The elite in Washington, the political elite, the journalistic elite, gather for a... And a lot of non-elite, let's be honest, but yeah. So these comedians at these dinners often are skating very close to the line. I mean, a lot of political humor is, is good when it's very edgy. When Clinton was there and going through the various sex scandals, Imus took it maybe right over the line. Doing play-by-play on the radio with John Miller. Bobby Bonilla hit a double, and we all heard the president in his obvious excitement holler, Go, baby! And I remember commenting at the time, I bet that's not the first time he said that. It was brutal and very, very personal, and Bill Clinton was sitting there having to, to take this, and a lot of jokes about his sex life, and the First Lady was there. It was brutal to the point where, you know, the press was just uncomfortable. It was reported that the White House press secretary and other senior aides were considering Uh, getting up and telling the president that they should just walk out. There have been other times where uh, the cringe factor was fairly high. And another one that comes to mind is when the George W. Bush administration was getting really mired in Iraq and it was becoming clear that the press had done a pretty lousy job looking at weapons of mass destruction and things like that. To sit here at the same table with my hero, George W. Bush, to to be this close to the man, I, I feel like I'm dreaming. Somebody pinch me. You know what? I'm, I'm a pretty sound sleeper. That may not be enough. Somebody shoot me in the face. <laughs> over the last five years, you people were so good. Over, uh, over, over tax cuts, WMD intelligence, the effect of global warming. We Americans didn't want to know, and you had the courtesy not to try to find out. I was at this one, and Washington journalists tend to be a little thin-skinned and narcissistic. Colbert just hit a few third rails of the relationship between the press at the time and the Bush administration and how much the press was responsible for not being tough enough on on Bush. He didn't do a friendly performance, you know what I mean? He didn't come in that room to, to, to sort of like placate the crowd or flatter the crowd with those kinds of jokes. It was much more pitched to some audience at home, and I'm just going to be up here, you know, tearing the bark off of the people in this room. 2011, perhaps one of the most consequential of these dinners occurred when Donald Trump attended as a guest. Donald Trump has been saying that he will run for president as a Republican, which is surprising since I just assumed he was running as a joke. And there are these great reaction shots of Trump just sort of seething. He was on Fox a lot, very serious critic of Obama, leading the birther stuff. He was the big star from The Apprentice, right? You're fired. Yeah. But also kind of like in in starting to be in like right wing politics. No one is happier, no one is prouder to put this birth certificate matter to rest than the Donald. And that's because he can finally get back to focusing on the issues that matter. Like, did we fake the moon landing? What really happened in Roswell? And where are Biggie and Tupac? There's been a lot written over the years that argues that that was the moment Donald Trump decided to finally, after flirting with it for many years, run for president. Trump famously didn't attend any of these. The leader of our country is not here. And that's because he lives in Moscow. It is a very long flight. It'd be hard for Vlad to make it. Vlad can't just make it on a Saturday. It's a Saturday. 
As for the other guy, I think he's in Pennsylvania because he can't take a joke. Some of the coverage of that, it was considered unfair to roast Trump that harshly because he wasn't there. I think the next one was more of a, holy shit, that, that's not nice. I actually really like Sarah. I think she's very resourceful. Like she burns facts and then she uses that ash to create a perfect smoky eye. Like maybe she's born with it. Maybe it's lies. It's probably lies. Really harsh, really over the top and cringy and hard to hard to watch. And you know, anything that makes you feel bad for someone like Sarah Huckabee Sanders, who, you know, in my, my experience as a press secretary was not always helpful and truthful. You know, as a comedian, you maybe have messed up when the crowd is turning against you and is on Sanders' side. So it's going to be really interesting to see what Biden does with this. I mean, you know, we have a very horrible, dark chapter unfolding in Europe with the war in Ukraine, a lot of economic worries. The pandemic, of course, is not over. So, ha, lots of funny stuff to joke about, right? Self-deprecation always works. That is, that's right. always rewarded. Poking fun of his problems, poking fun of the right-wing attacks on his cognitive abilities and his right. age and the troubles he's having right now and you know the extent to which the midterms might be a disaster for him. Having said all that, there's a pretty target-rich environment when he looks across the aisle okay. and, <laughs> and looks at some of the Republicans who have been in the headlines recently, whether it's Marjorie Taylor Greene or Madison Cawthor. Exactly. There may be some lingerie jokes and some space laser jokes thrown in there. Exactly. Like I mean, there's a, lot, you know, there's a lot of crazy stuff going on. I imagine the Democrats probably remembering 2011 and the jokes about Trump. Maybe they learned their lesson and they um, don't want to... <laughs> Don't want to poke the Kraken too much. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's a really good point. Uh, it looks like Trump's going to run anyway, but... Uh, yeah, yeah, just in case he's maybe wavering or something. I just think, forget like, the Trump Maybe joke. they want to stay away from the DeSantis jokes this time. I don't know. Yeah, <laughs> right.